I don't even know where to look. <laughs> right, guys. All right, guys. Welcome back to Mother Tucker's Antiques. You guys get to see our next holiday display, which is Easter. Um, outside of Christmas, that's our biggest thing that we collect. It has always been special for me, especially collecting and um, collecting vintage Easter items. And me and my grandmother used to also decorate for the holiday. And I'm going to give you a quick tour. And again, I'm filming this on Saturday. It's Easter weekend. So hope really made sure to display anything I purchased from other sellers this year. Uh, because with finding this uh, virtual online community, I, I really cherish and enjoy the things that I've purchased from them. Um, it's more personal. So, uh, all right, guys, here we go. Hey, let's, let's show you our Easter decor. All right, well, last time I think I started in the kitchen. So let's start there again. First of all, we'll start with the refrigerator and then we'll just work our way around. Um, of course, you can't beat some kitschy chenille magnets. Uh, we've had these for a long time. This cute little lady, not quite Easter, but she stays out with us all year round. Then we add, you know, of course, big old purple bunny. Funny guy here, and I love when you have the Google eyes, the googly eyes, and they're pink. I think that's fantastic. So now up here, some of these are some new things we acquired this year. We've had the bunny planter for a good long time. So I went ahead and thought it would look neat putting the big Easter egg bottle brush tree in it. I love these little sheep. We've actually had them for a while. Um, but then I felt that each year they should just come out and go into our Easter display. So hopefully I'm getting that glare off. Now, we acquired this little lady here in the middle from the lovely Ariana at the Withering Cottage. Tina was uh, bound and determined to add her to our collection. So Tina actually bought her when uh, Ariana sat in with me and Bill on Monday night during one of our sales during Mother Tucker's Monday. So we scooped her up and then these cute little Napco, hopefully the lights catch them right, these little Napco 1950s candle huggers. So we acquired these with the box. So we have those with the box. And then if you guys know me, especially from my time of buying things on Instagram or showing my collection, I'm a big fan of anything and everything styrofoam. And these were somebody's craft project, probably in the late 50s early 60s um, i love the fact that they used construction paper to make the hats and then of course they used some of the little you know glittery uh rhinestone in there um so now this 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 right here we actually acquired this it was already pre-made we've had this for probably 15 years so this was somebody's a little assemblage probably put it together in the 1960s and then this year I added this little guy the little um, chenille bunny rabbit to it just to give it a little more kitsch as if it didn't scream kitsch already so all right guys so there's the top of the refrigerator <clears throat> here are some more things that are in our collection garden guy Bill actually gifted us these little kitschy rabbits this year thank you Bill um, we've had this planter for a good long time and my cat Rosie has decided that she's helping daddy become a decorator. So this was out, but now has to be hidden because this doubles as a cat toy. So I do enjoy anything handmade, especially kitschy vintage, but now we have to hide that from my little girl Rosie. And thank you, Sherry. Time for treasure. I scored these from her whatnot sale. Um, actually creeped on it. Couldn't wait to add them because I love blues in any Easter decor. I think the blues with the purples and the pinks and the yellows look so good. So, of course, another cute little styrofoam. And this one, I think, is a hobbyist. So, uh, I'll go over it in a little in the, the video here. But everybody assumes these styrofoam pieces are hobbyists. They were actually also produced, you know, companies produced them and sold them. But this one, I believe, is a hobbyist. Oh, my goodness. And then yesterday, a lovely box arrived from Enamor Amy and her mom, Pam. Thank you guys so much for all these goodies. Oh, my. So many good treats. So I actually got out one of my vintage Easter baskets, which I do try to collect. Uh, you can usually tell that they're vintage when the base is wooden. And then there's this like thinner, they use like a thinner um, 
rattan on the basket. So I, I have a few of these, which you'll see. Um, and you can usually tell the way they have weaved in the thinner celluloid plastic style into the basket. So this is probably 1960s, but the basket aside, I popped in all these goodies from Enamor Amy and her mom. Guys, please make sure you're following Enamor Amy. Her mom is a baker. They're also um, confection artists. Uh, Enamor Amy's grandmother taught her how to do some of this, and it's just, oh, it's such a good treat. And Amy sent the mother Tucker some mother cluckers, so we got some mother cluckers right there. And again, our friend who does assemblages, Tina will hopefully be able to link her. Um, these are her creations. We love them. And then, of course, I'm a fan of anything Hong Kong and kitsch. So I actually discovered these, not these specific ones, but that they even created these a few years ago. So we've added these to our collection, and I love them. And again, if I'm missing anybody that we've purchased something from, I... Uh, do my best to give everybody a shout out, but and thank you everybody. But there is our, there's our little kitchen table. Oh, and I also popped these into our shadow boxes. These little Hong Kong plastic little Easter decor items made of plastic, and then of course these great little styrofoam Easter eggs. So there you go. You can see this is our little kitchenette, all done up for Easter. And then here's the other side of our kitchen, so I just pop those in. I actually have a few more of those, but I just pop them in here or there. And then we have these little kitschy little shakers we add. And then here I'll show you the window. All right, guys, now this is our backyard and this is the window. I know there's a gnarly glare, but hopefully you get the gist. Of course, I decorate any square inch that I can. There we go. Now you guys can see everything. So these are Hong Kong. These are your quintessential plastic little Rosbro or little candy containers. Just things we've picked up here or there. And then we added this one this year. Was really excited to find a purple one. And then we've had the pink one for a while. So I really wanted to take a moment to spotlight this. The egg here is a uh, paper mache egg that Sherry makes, Time for Treasure. Guys, please make sure you're giving her a follow. She makes these every year. And she sells them a couple ways. She sells them empty, or she puts like a cute little kitschy Easter style piece in. This year I was able to finally get one of her creations and then I added my own little um, Mica Glitter Japan Putts bunnies. I was able to find a few of them last year with the little millinery flowers in them. So we added that this year and then I have these cute little eggs I popped in there and I made my own little assemblage inside Sherry's little paper mache egg. So. Sherry, I hope you approve. Well, this is probably one of my big centerpieces. Now I've moved on to our dining room. We acquired this old 1960s, and I know it's 1960s because it is dated on the bottom. This gorgeous candy sign. Um, imagine they probably didn't print a lot of these store displays. Then when you take into consideration that they were throwaway, and then take into consideration anyone that kept them, what are the possibilities that they've lasted? 40 to 50 to 60 years. So I actually enjoy these more because you have to imagine the rarity in them. So I just think this is really, really cool the way they went ahead and had the very cartoon bunny on it, then the more realistic, and she's almost like a pixie fairy girl. Um, it's very whimsical, so we were very happy to add that. I just added some of my vintage candy boxes here in front. Um, this one we acquired at auction this year. Love that. And these aren't these are not getting any cheaper either. So all right, there's that corner of the dining. This is how I used to decorate in our old home. And it's been a while since I've been able to do this, but I was really excited to be able to do it again this year. So the lamp is one of the uh 1960s, 70s stem. They call these stem lamps, or also commonly known as egg lamps. That stays out all year round, but actually looks really good at Easter time. And then um, put together this Easter basket with some of our kitschy goodies. Let me get in here. Hopefully this isn't too dark. The bunny hop record I purchased from an Amor Amy during one of her sales. Because if you don't know, guys, I was a former DJ. And I like to add a little touch of that 
to my display to kind of reflect back on where I've come from, what I've done. And then of course, the styrofoam handmade goodies. Love them in the basket. There's a little teeny tiny die cut bunny poked in back there, popped in back there. So, and she was part of the uh, grouping that I purchased to that. I just showed you on top of the refrigerator. So, this little guy here, this kitschy guy, he was missing his bow. So, Tina proudly gave him a new bow because his bow would have been plastic. Um, oh, my God. This I purchased from Sharon of Freddie Fines. Um, she was on a YouTube sale this year. I purchased that from her. Love these pixies. As you know, um... I'm a pixie lover too. Um, my collection isn't as, ex as extensive as some other people's collection, but nonetheless, I was happy to add those. This card back here and this card back here was actually a gift from Susan Jackson. Thank you, Susan. She actually purchased them for us during a live. Sarah the Traveling Button was selling them. So, Susan, thank you so much. They will stay in my display every year. I thoroughly love them. And then, Oh, we'll start here with the little litho tin basket. <clears throat> Pardon me. Guys, if you'd have seen these little rabbits when we found them, we actually pulled them out of a clean-out last year. They were gray and completely dirty. And if you guys know this Japan felt, if you hit it with water, it starts to disintegrate and it starts to discolor. Um, so I... Put a lot of labor into restoring those to the best of my ability that I could. So I love the little chick pick and then the two little cupcake picks. Oh, that reminds me. I need to show you one more thing in the kitchen. Maybe we'll end with that. So, And then these kitschy little bunnies. Of course, that's a little stock of net face. Old stock. There's one in blue. Here's a pink one. And then there's Mr. Chick, who's made of the silk the um, silk ornaments and then it, they're actually old enough that they have the mercury uh, glass added to it so they look like buttons and then over here of course that all is in a vintage Easter basket probably 1960s or 50s basket then we have these that actually have mica glitter on them and these are the little styrofoam bunnies and then we'll do a slow pan so you guys can get it Get the idea from the other view over here. Those little bunnies right there, they're Taiwan Lefton. And then the little diorama here is an old hobbyist piece. I bought that at auction a few years ago. Truth be told, Tina thinks it's very tacky. I love it. Um, I love the contrast of the, the green and the purple. And this is how I purchased it. So the previous owner had created the little assemblage those are ceramic eggs in there and that's an old you can see there's some deterioration on it that's probably an old um oh god the candle company girly girly candle and of course my girl rosie decided to take the attention and play with her ball so please ignore the noise this is another one of these hong kong this would have been a little candy container I actually bought this and restored it. In essence, when I say restored, it was completely dirty. And you don't want to go scrubbing the face too much. Rosie, Rosie, thank you. You don't want to go to scrubbing the plastic because you'll rub the face off. So and then I put this together this year. I do collect greeting cards. And again, I hope the glare is not too bad. But I put one of those card holders in the basket added this and as I was discussing earlier some of these styrofoam pieces are not hobbyist they were actually mass produced this is one and some of the ways you can tell is that they used a lot of uh, commercial grade things so the ribbon is very commercial grade the way they inserted the eyes um, they used pins and you can just tell once you've seen a hobbyist one versus a really rosy like really you got to play right now good good god so <laughs> you can tell just by the quality of it so this one would be a manufactured one this one i also do believe is a manufactured one but again it's up to everyone's interpretation but just remember some of those styrofoam ones weren't just all hobbyists they were produced so these you can tell were produced 
just by the quality and some of the things that they, they used. So here is my vintage record player. We keep this in the corner and here is some of my die cut and honeycomb pieces that I collect. We actually acquired him last year. He is an older one. You can just tell by the thickness of the cardboard. And this one this year is, I'm so happy that I purchased this. I actually purchased this on eBay. I was hesitant to pay up, but I had never seen it before. It's this little honeycomb made by Beistel. It is a little diorama egg. And if you guys know that bunny, that's their little signature bunny. They used him a lot in the 50s and 60s. Then if you guys collect little, um, you know, folks collect the kits for when they painted the Easter eggs. Hinkles was one of the earliest ones. And actually Hinkles is local to us and is a big deal. And it, they were actually one of the first ones to produce dyes to paint Easter eggs. So Hinkles is pretty... Uh, known or is actually one of the leaders or beginners of things that we started to do at Easter time probably back in the 30s and 40s so this is probably one of their boxes from the 60s and I'm happy to have it a little wear to it but it does have the original glass bottles inside and then just some of our other things made in Japan these are putts with the chenille chicks somebody made that little arrangement that's actually a ceramic egg then you have our little silk chicks or ducks. I'm sorry, they're more ducks. I get my ducks and chicks confused. And there you go. And there's another little assemblage. And then back here, my gosh, these were kits that you made out of Clorox bottles. And we purchased this from Barb at Winky Now Vintage. Love this. And I'm also kind of happy and sentimental to buy it from her because I know her love for holiday and it's kind of fun when you purchase something from a like-minded or, you know, from somebody who loves stuff the way you do. So, Barb, thank you so much. And then here's the top of our hutch in the dining room. Kind of filled that up this year. I want to thank Bill from Garden Guy Bill. He gifted us these little die cuts, and I popped them in our little vintage planters. We all know they came from Target last year, those bottle brush trees. And then we've collected Easter ceramics for a long time. These little candy boxes I bought last year from Steph Crazy for Kitsch. She's a really good artist, really good at crafting. And here's the boy bunny. Let me do a slow pan and we'll get over here and I'll show you the girl bunny. I wish she would have made some more of these this year because I would have purchased something different. Last year she made chicks, but um, I just bought the bunnies from her last year. Then these little spun head picks. I put all these little picks in our vases, in our swung vases, and then we acquired this this year from the Whimsy Lark um, of Lancaster. Thank you so much. We got her at our one show. But the Whimsy Lark, thank you. Make sure you're following her. Then I throw a few silk eggs or pastel style ornaments in our brandy snifter and then you can see what else i have up here this is one of my favorite planters too and i actually purchased this planter last year from laura at pinwheel vintage i um, was really happy to buy that last year on a live sale and this guy here came from freddie fines this is a little funny bunny you would have inflated him so i was super happy to get him this year and thank you, Sharon of Freddie Fines. Stand down here and show you the little rebel, little Rosie. Rosie, who's making a bunch of noise, who won't make eye contact because now she's embarrassed. But there's your Rosie moment. Hope you enjoy. And now we're into the living room. And if you guys remember from my Valentine's display, I do a pretty big display on our mantle. We, we bought this creation this year from a local artist. Again, hopefully Tina can link her name. If not, I'll make sure to give her a shout out. Um, again, trying to squeeze this video in before we actually get into Easter. It's been kind of busy at the shop and with live sales, so, um, but we love her. We think she's really kitschy. I found these little anthrop anthropomorphic worms about a year ago. I just had their very spring, look great in Easter decor. Um, this is a little Norcrest uh, planter. And then, of course, these bottle brush trees, they're Dollar Tree. They do a great job. 
I want to say this planter is Napco, but I purchased him last year from an Instagram seller. And then these little planters I've collected. This is um, A Fine Ceramics. That is their uh, bunny that they used for a long time. So if you see that bunny, they came in different colors. They used them as figures. They used them as planters. And of course, we popped some fantastic plastic in there. Then we have another Dollar Tree uh, bottle brush tree. And then I have some more of these little bunnies that are the Putz Mica made in Japan little picks with the millinery flowers. And that's a little Napco planter. This is a little covered dish made by Lefton. We've had that for years. Um, here's the partner to the other one because one face is left, one face is right. Then of course we have another bottle brush tree. Um, I don't recall that this is the original one, but my grandmother had one of these Norcrest little bunny figurines with the cracked egg. So I'm pretty sure that I didn't ever or wasn't able to get her original one, but I did find one years later and I always put that out thinking of my grandma. So now this little guy is Napco. So I have to think that since you saw the other planter, Napco uh, did this to sort of compete or to do the same thing. Another bottle brush treat, and this is a larger A fine ceramic planter. Again, Trashtastic plastic in all of those. You got to do it. Um, at least I think you do. And in the man of the hour, my Mr. Easter Pixie, who is in this great yellow. He's in really good condition. We had him tucked away for years. And then uh, last year, I thought, you know what? He'd be great in the Easter display. So there's the there's the thousand dollar shot. That face. This cardboard store display. Um, he actually came from a flower shop up near Reading, and they used to put him out for years in the flower shop and then I was lucky enough to buy him and add him to our decor. So he's proudly placed there in front of the uh, mantle. Blue corner for a long time and I've had the little purple stuffed bunny, gosh, for about six years or so. So I put him there every year and I was able to find some other ones throughout the years to add. I actually found a little ducky that matched him, was the same error, so I popped that in his hand. And then some other in this floor. We have the little blow mold guy. He would have been like a candy, or he would have been used as an Easter basket for a young child, probably back in the 60s or 70s. And then we have some more of my styrofoam little bunnies. And then a few years ago, I found these, that it was a Michaels, I think. So I popped those in, because I think they match and they fit with the kitschy decor. And then my other man of the hour is this fella. He is just like the one I bought from Barb. These were kits, and then you had to provide your own Clorox bottle. I bought him last year from Kelly, Kelly Wagman. Thank you so much. She doesn't sell all that much, but when she does, she sells some neat stuff. And those are some of our candles, some of our girly candles. And then we have our chalkware bunny down here, who would have been a carnival prize. I created this this year. Tina found this planter, and it was a nice larger planter. So I went ahead and stuck in one of those Dollar Tree trees and then hung all of our little kitschy chenille and spun head bunnies on it to make a little Easter tree. And then if you guys remember from our other tour, and if you guys didn't see that and you guys enjoy holiday, you'll want to go back and see my Valentine's Day decor. You can see how we decorate, and I hope to do this throughout the holidays so you can see how we change out our displays and things like that. So, But this is what I do over here by this hutch, which is by our front door. And we bought her, oh goodness, years ago, and we kept her. And that's, that's the, original display, the, the original little um, flower arrangement that they put in her. And she's our little Easter head vase. And of course, nothing is complete without those little Norcrest or Yukago little furry bunnies. And then here's One Brow. Mr. One Brow, he is a dream pet. Somewhere along the time, somewhere along time, he's lost one of his eyebrows, but I think it leaves him almost questioning or gives him a better stature, so we love him. And then I popped in one of these little bunny die cuts. I stole some of these ideas from Magpie Ethel. So I like to mix the media of a stuffed animal with a die cut. Then of course, this is a little Norcrest which actually matches 
or is the same series as the cracked egg one I showed you on the mantle. And then as we pan over here, we were so happy to score this this year. This is a little Woolikins. Very kitschy, very collectible, in very good condition. They made them, at least that I can verify, they did a little cherub for Valentine's Day. And then, of course, this one is so sought after. And we were so fortunate to find this little April girl last year. All right, and this is our cabinet here, or should I say our case in our living room. Again, it's not vintage, but it's vintage inspired. So again, this is just some of our collection. I probably have a few more totes that I couldn't get out this year because we didn't have the room. So I was able to find these last year. These, of course, I don't think are hobbyists. I think these are manufactured by a company. We have a few of these little styrofoam bunnies. These, these little eggs right here, the pink ones, those are probably a kit. And then here, oh, and then of course the mermaid. If you recall from our other video, the Valentine's Day video, she was holding a candy box. Now she holds an oversized egg, plastic egg. And then of course we have the egg garland, and some more of these styrofoam bunnies. And all the pictures you see are of our family. This was my grandfather actually on a ship in World War II. I think he looks like Bing Crosby in that. Um, never got to meet him, but some of these are Tina's grandparents and aunt and uncle that's her aunt carmen and uncle louie done with a mermaid and those are my grandparents and i don't know who those young kids are that's me and tina so we'll keep moving now but all the little kitschy goodies here we actually bought those last year they're little flocked ducks <clears throat> cute little bunny here some more bunnies the, that would have been a little kit that you purchased. This guy's a little harder to find. I haven't seen him before. <clears throat> He's a little knee hugger bunny. With a look. With a look. I'm not sure what he's been into. Um, he's a sad bunny, but I love him nonetheless. And then we found him this year. He's a little Norcrest. Then let's go down here. Of course, no, no Easter displays complete without some Hershey Kisses. Some more. I've had these since probably before me and Tina met. I purchased these years ago. These little um, styrofoam, little kitschtastic, plastic, fantastic little Easter displays. Some more of these little Hong Kong or Japan little figures. Some more styrofoam eggs. Down here, this basket means a lot to me. This was actually my grandfather's Easter basket. So we, we stuck a little stock of net in there. That's actually a little bunny pin I purchased from Katie, Vintage Treasure Girl, last year. Then we've just collected these throughout the years. All this kitschy Easter. This little guy here, he's bisque. He was my grandmother's. We put him out every year. The little left in bunnies. Then this little guy here with his pipe, he's a hobbyist. Then as you move down here, we have our dream pets because we're in the cat-friendly zone. So then you can see there's another little dream pet, Tina's grandparents' wedding photo. And last but not least, I wanted to show you this. We had this little vintage Easter basket that we found. It's made out of glass. Then I found these little vintage 1950s little chickies. These would have been little cupcake picks. So we added that in. So that'll wrap it up. Well, guys, that wraps it up for us. I hope you enjoyed coming along on our Easter tour of some of our things. But please make sure you check out the other video I did that you guys can see our Valentine's display. Please, guys, make sure you comment on this. Please tell me if there's anything you really liked, anything you saw. If I tried to give a history on something and I wasn't quite accurate, I tried to be. Uh, let me know what you know about the things that I showed. Um, and again, gang, uh, please make sure you're subscribed to Mother Tucker's Antiques. Come visit us in Effort of Pennsylvania, our brick and mortar. We have 40 active dealers. Uh, make sure you tune into our live sales. We have two live sales every single week, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's Mother Tucker's Monday with myself and Garden Guy Bill. Every now and again, we bring an incredible co-seller on with us. And then now on Wednesdays, you'll be able to join myself and Enamor Amy. We'll be getting our kitchen on every single Wednesday night, along with mid-century decor and anything we can find. So... Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell, and uh, make sure you guys have a kitschy Easter. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.